Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. This is Megan with Believe in the Run. And once again, we have let the white foot in the door. Yeah. And uh, we got Jarrett, the white foot expert from the running <laughs> event. Yep, I'm here. In studio. Yeah, he actually he somehow found a way to tag along for the trip and ended up coming to Austin with us. Luckily, didn't have to room with me this time. It was like gum on the bottom of your shoe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is the third year I was there, so it's like I keep figuring it out. Mm-hmm. It does. Keep, we keep picking up dirt. <laughs> you guys are mean. <laughs> it's all good. Thanks, hey, Mike. I, yeah. Uh, it's good to see you, Jarrett. You too. Uh, that sound forced. It sounded forced. Which one, mine or his? Jared's. Yeah. You had to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, he just got barraged with the... Uh, is it barraged? Garaged? Bar- 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 you, you got a barrage <laughs> of uh, insults. And then yeah, I got it. Okay. okay, it's all positive from here on out. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, so uh, one thing we did want to get off our chest right at the beginning. So with this going to be our The Running Event 2022 recap show. And uh, it's a special show. We're going to also pump out another regular episode this week. But this one we wanted to just say we were scheduled back to back to back to back all day long with 30 minute appointments so we were running around like a chicken without a head i think we had or a pigeon without a head i think we had over 20 definitely right yeah. yeah and um so if we didn't see you at the running event like some of our favorite brands we didn't get a chance to uh like talk to or hang out with like we didn't see nathan this year we didn't see um rabbit. running rabbit we didn't get to see merrill 361 yeah a bunch of people and guys it wasn't because we don't love you it was more or less that uh we had pr people reach out to us and get us on calendars and we weren't even thinking we just went with with that you know who else was there that who? we didn't get a chance speedland apparently yeah i didn't even know they were there i saw don don rachel athlete yeah um yeah but world the, record person we did see the gs tam in person which looks pretty rad for trail shoe it looks very wide foot friendly Ooh, it's, it's actually the, it's the first thing i noticed and i would have tried his on but you know don's got i think like a size 12 which yeah. automatically is gonna make it, make it, it seem like the biggest shoe i mean it looked like a it looked like a bumper car i mean that thing is huge yeah it looks pretty sweet though yeah it looks like you could get that ultra distance in mm-hmm. comfort I'm dying to know how soft that foam is. Like yeah. if it's a firm, thick one or like, cause you were telling me that you tried on the ultra and, uh, Oh, the ultra Olympus this morning. And yeah. you're like, it's firm, but it rolls well. Yeah. It reminded me of the, what you said, the sock and the endorphin shift. Not a really, ma- it looks in s- like a huge max cushion shoe, the Olympus, but it's not. Anyways, we can talk about that on the regular podcast this week, but yeah, for now, dude, my throat is still not recovered. That's what Jarrett was saying. From the from how much screaming. talking and interviewing and screaming at the Y'all All Boy concert. Yeah. My my voice, like it's it's starting to sound more normal, but the last two days I had no voice and I was like, I'm not sick. I just was yelling and lost my voice. I, I guess I didn't really I didn't scream that much. I tried to do the I was reading a story to my kids last night of Star Wars. I tried doing R2 D two. I couldn't do it. <laughs> Did you try too whistling? High, it was too high pitched. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah, I was just doing beep, <laughs> beep, boop, pops. Which, are you reading the five minute Star Wars stories? Yeah, yeah, I guess. I don't know. They're I short storybooks. Oh, yeah. it's so good. It's a thick it's a storybook. Oh, no, it's not oh. that. This is just like a beginner reading books. Oh, Star no. Wars. You Star got to get the five minute Star Wars story. It goes through each movie, but it doesn't mean like for the parent. Oh. Each one's going to take They're five minutes. They're way longer than five minutes. And also, I can't pronounce any of those That's names. why they're long for you. She's like, Abe, Wait, Abe Wan. Real quick. I could Abe never do Kano- that. Is it, Kanab. Are the, the tall um, on Ice Planet Hoth, the, are they called at-ats? Or yes. They, okay. AT-ATs? No, yeah. at-ats. That would be ridiculous to be AT-ATs. But yeah. then there's R2-D2s, not r 2 ds <laughs> Yeah. All right. Wow. But I, that was PM. bothering me yeah. for the last 12 hours. No, so they're at. Right. Okay. And then the um, the two-legged ones, what are those called? Uh, I, oh, yeah, I forget. Yeah. In the fort. In the yeah. Indoor. See, the thing is, Megan didn't watch those movies, so she doesn't know how to pronounce Like Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know what that is. So when you see a, right. an illustration of them and it but says. But also, it's not even that. It's like the places they go to, which are all made up. And Tatooine. I'm supposed to know how to pronounce those. Yeah. <laughs> I would just make it up and the voice would be like, uh, I'm not, I don't think that's right. I don't, I don't, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> well, 
Anyways. Anyway, let's get back to my, the running of our it. Our voices are somewhat here, so let's get to it. We're going to, what do you want to do, cover some shoes, some of the best stuff we saw, some of the coolest stuff. Do you want to walk through everyone? It might be a little bit different. Maybe yeah, I don't long. know if we need to walk through everyone. I, I'd say let's walk through some of the highlights. All right. Um, what is kind of, uh, you know, another thing I want to disclose is, you know, we're there as a, like, we see it as we're helping brands get out world, word and publicity about their products. And good, you know, it's almost like a PR, like a public relations whirlwind where we come in, there's other uh people that do similar stuff to us. I don't know if anybody was there that does exactly what we do, but we're, get, oh, sorry. we're there to give them hype about their products and we're there and we're excited about it. And I feel like the brands need to figure out, do they want to get the hype for their product and get people excited about their brand? Or do they want to show like get buyers interested in something that is, out there in the next year because i think we're hitting kind of this weird wall where yeah. it's like you're also well, like the the people listening have no yeah, like probably I was, don't I'm about to say idea. before we get into okay, it yeah. actually let's like we never really talked about what the running event is okay let's do it so like the running event is a industry trade show for running brands running companies in the past it's been so that your local running store run specialty can come and see like the offerings for the next year place their orders kind of do all that stuff and then I guess what over the last four years four to five years i'd say it's turned into more of like a running an actual running event where brands are doing partnerships and events and podcasts and things like that people like us and some other outlets coming to where now it's like a i don't what would you call it now it's a i think it's it's an 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 inside insiders like running industry what's going on event yeah and i think a lot of that changed with the rise of shoe tubers including ourselves and mm-hmm. instagram content and stuff like that hype I, content I, I like to say the first year i went and megan and i were looking back and i can't believe it was this long ago 2014 and we went and people we'd walk up to the booth and people would be like what do you want <laughs> we're like well we just want to see what shoes you have and they would kind of like brush us off and it wasn't a very friendly environment for people doing what we do mm-hmm. um and then i think they figured it out and they're like oh these people can help us get the word out it's free advertising we're going to be all over their site we're going to be on their youtube we're going to be it's great pr so when there was only a few of us going i mean a couple of years ago it was us one other website and running warehouse runner's world yeah and and runner's world yeah now and probably outside um was there now it was like i I, it was like we were like flies in there there's so many uh youtubers and and people taking pictures and yeah and And i think they're gonna the running event or the brands are gonna have to come to some sort of agreement or like definition of what the event is now because it's almost reached a breaking point where it's like anyone can get a floor pass now and then they just jump in and start grabbing shoes off the wall filming shit and it's like it's it's out of a little out of control i think because yeah. brands especially certain brands <laughs> nike uh <laughs> like to control the message of you know which i get in a way like what their what shoes are coming out and when and so when you just have random people coming in taking photos you can't put out anything that comes out in the next but six that, months that's also like, the problem so like we are there and we have appointments with the brand so we understand what's on the exactly. embargo right, right what you can post what you can't post we talk to the brands and we're respectful of you know we try to be respectful of embargoes and not publishing stuff yeah. that you can't be seen yet with, with that said a handful of brands that we met with said that we could publish something and then we got emails from a pr company that were right. not even there saying that we but had that's to take that's them not down. my point in this my point is then there's people that have gotten media passes who have websites and have YouTube channels and stuff, but they go around and they take pictures of stuff without talking to the brands. Right. And the brands have stuff out there that they don't want to be published yet. Yeah. So we're following the rules and we're making sure that we only publish the things that they are asking us to publish. We actually shot videos that we won't be able to share. Mm -hmm. 
and there's other people that are posting pictures. So all the stuff that's supposed to be an embargo, we're like, yeah. We're as frustrated as the brands because we're like, hey, we're playing by the rules. We're trying our best anyway. Yeah, and there's other people who are out there just throwing the stuff up there. I mean, I was surprised at some of the people that we saw putting up stuff. And once it's out there, yeah, like... It's, uh, it's on Reddit within five minutes. Yeah, like somebody, <laughs> one of the people that has a review site published all the Adidas shoes. Oh, wow. And they, as soon as he did, I saw him. I went to my Discover on Instagram, and they're everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, that's just our rant on, um, like, kind of like, hey, maybe running event needs to figure out and with the brand well, they what they want to get out yeah, of Yeah, they have event. to eventually. So it's either limit the people who come to, like, more legitimate media outlets, or even then, I don't know, I'm sure you can get people taking photos, but, like, or the brands had to be like, look, anything that's under embargo, we literally just have to hide and show separately. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I mean, t 2019 was the first time that Robbie and I, you know, first went to this. And there has been this, uh, I guess, you know, between. Hold the microphone next to your face. Between the amount of. Uh, <laughs> of no, in um, the headphones, he's going in. Shoes oh, that have been on the floor is kind of going down uh you yeah, know we sell and, less this and year they're hiding normal. more stuff versus the amount of uh you know public and media that is actually attending the show but i will give you we should probably move on but i will give you one brand that did it correct it was uh, when we met with asics and i think adidas did a good job of it except for they had their stuff out on the floor so people were grabbing it and taking pictures but asics had stuff upstairs locked away that since we're all together and they have the person who designed the shoe and was the PM on the shoe, we were able to talk, go over the shoe, shoot a video in depth with that, uh, with the product manager. Mm -hmm. And then later we may not share, we may not be able to share that video for a month or two, but later we can share a video where we're actually walking over the product right. with the expert. So that I do think is is valuable. So there's still a, an opportunity to have and host someone like us who's who's going to be doing this. Well, yeah, yeah, ex exactly. And that's what I found surprising because there were some companies, very large companies, who just said no to any video. And I'm like, well, we can just like you if you want to control the narrative or control you know what said about the shoe. We can talk to you about the shoe right now and then just give us an embargo date to put it out, but whatever. Um, anyways, let's just start talking about some stuff. All right. So first off, takes place in Austin, Texas. Yeah. Austin. Now, and, and we get in. It's a beautiful 70, 80 degree day. I'd say 80 because I went for a run. It was definitely yeah. <laughs> <laughs> summertime. Rob is the only one I'm like, he's like, oh, it's like we left 50 degrees here and we went there and it was 80. And so we did our run before we went, and Robbie's like, nah, I'll go. It was miserable. In the hot swamp. Yeah. It was hot. It was back to summer, and I was not ready for it. But then we did that, and then that night you went to an A6 party at a pickleball bar venue. It was like a little board. It was like pickleball and everything. Yeah. That was your first time playing pickleball, right? It was. Hey, did you play? I wasn't there. Do you know oh, I that's right, because you were sick. That's right. I had pickleball uh Paddles and ball. We could go to Patterson Park and play anytime. Oh, you okay. Want. But I mean, that that was my first time playing pickleball. I'm one hundred percent sold. Good. I'm so sold on it. I mean, okay. I I'm like, I was wondering, can I build one of those? You know, in my in my yard. <laughs> I have to say, your athletic ability was shocking. Jared has got some junk. Okay. He was moving around. Jumps. He's hitting some hitting some balls. Like, are you country club raised or something? Like, no. I mean, it's just a. a a God given talent that I have. Okay. Yeah, that's the. He's, he's a natural at pickleball. You're moving on. Um, but that was fun. We had a good time. It was fun. I got to uh, practice some of my Japanese with the oh, uh, with the guys from ASICS who are over from. Uh, where's their headquarters again? Um, Kobe? No. Yeah, Kobe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was cool. I, I, in Japanese, asked them if they wanted something to drink. And they said they started cheering and <laughs> <laughs> went and got beers. Oh, so yeah. they're huge fans of us. It was good. I um, they were digging, and you know what? One of them went and ran CIM afterwards. Oh wow! Yeah, nice. Roy, that's who smart. is uh, Kamori. Oh, that's right. Did he actually? Right, you told Kamori. Wasn't he going for sub three? Did he get it? 
Uh, no, I don't. I don't. I did, well, no, I didn't see his oh, uh, things. Komori san. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you know it's impolite to use their first name unless you're familiar with them? So you call people by their last name? Oh, uh, I didn't, but that's good to know. Like now. you would be Redding your son. Yeah. Weisberg son. <laughs> no one. Yeah, I'm glad we don't do that. Murray son. It would be bad. Um, Can we discuss the barbecue there? The barbecue. Oh, I have to say that was the best barbecue while we were at the event. Agreed. For sure. And that brisket. It was ridiculous. Like we should find out from our friends at ASIC who they got to cater that. It was from it was from that place. Are you kidding? No, I asked them at the front desk. I was like, "Do you got? Did you make the food here?" They're like, "Yeah, that's wow. our food." Whoa. Yeah. I mean, because there. Let's just go through it. There was tacos, both beef and chicken, which were very good. There was uh, barbecued chicken, smoked chicken. Yeah. There was brisket. There's mac and cheese. There was coleslaw. There was pickles. It was so good. I, that's one of those things where I, after I got like a sample of all the food, I'm just like, why didn't I just get all brisket? Just well, the whole plate. And I did. I went back. Yeah, the double. sample was the first plate. The next plate was all brisket. Make yeah. you really, right. you missed out on this one. And then. Are you bummed? It, it had an open <laughs> bar, but I was trying to be like real conservative because it was. First one night. thing I've learned from the running event is if I go too hard too fit soon, like it's a really even though it's two days, it's a long two days for sure. If if you're there, so I went beer, athletic brew, beer, athletic That's brew. Smart. I watched Robbie, Robbie. I actually I did fine. You had a couple of Palomas. When we were getting off the bus, I was a little worried about you. Wait, really? Because I only yeah. had two beers and two Palomas. Is that That's a couple. <laughs> <laughs> a it depends on the tequila pour. They weren't super heavy pours, so and they're small, small ones, the cans. So yeah. I didn't. I felt. I didn't felt fine the next morning. You did. Yeah. We went for a run. What did you have? I was having uh, beers. I was switching between hazy IPAs and sours, so I was mixing Ooh, all of them. Drinking hazy IPAs. I know. The dude Not palomas. I was sticking with Modellos are pretty much water. <laughs> like I don't even know what lime water. So Megan, you stayed home. We got back, and you were when I got back to the hotel. You it was already your lights were out. It was and, like 11. And I tried I to, to be. I went to bed at like 8.30. <laughs> I tried to be real quiet. And I was like, she's going to be impressed. Because I wasn't like, I, I would bet that she was thinking I was going to come back a little tipsy. Yeah. But like I was like able and to navigate the room in the dark. But yeah, so we got up early the next morning. We went for a run with. Hold on. Can I tell one more? I, yeah. Brad's from the East Park. Can I tell the Val Almond story? <laughs> yes, you can. Oh, this is really good, actually. This is embarrassing. So Val Almond, she was gold medalist in the discus. We interviewed um, her. Yeah, we interviewed her while we were at the World Cham- Athletic Championships. She might be one of my favorite athletes. She is just She's warm, friendly, bubbly, just energetic. And, and when I hugged her, I felt something and her, inside. Oh, okay. And her coach is amazing. He's yeah. a super nice guy. So I was talking to them and um, just kind of chatting it up. She's like, oh, what do you got going on? You know, next year, I said, well, I'll be running the Tokyo Marathon. She's like, oh, that's cool. And I was like, just thinking from like a personal perspective of going to Tokyo. And I'm like, have you ever, have you ever been to Tokyo? <laughs> She's like, there's kind of like a pause. And then. Did she, we tell people that she won a gold medal there? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then she says, yeah, uh, it, it, Olympic, mostly spent my time in the Olympic Village, but didn't really get to see much and i was just like oh man i was like i'm so sorry this like, is after robbie has we've interviewed her about <laughs> winning a gold medal at the tokyo like, like, obviously i knew that she won a gold there but I, I, I was thinking just brazil from a personal <laughs> perspective like have you been to that like totally didn't think about olympics and to be fair she really just because of covid they really only were in the but she she athlete village she thought you were joking yeah and, and, and you had to own up she was it. like i thought you were just dead panning there for a second which is totally something i would normally do and i regret it missing that opportunity and then admitting that <laughs> yeah i think i would have just not admitted i think i would have just rolled with it yeah, yeah. Uh, dina castor was there uh, as well yeah like at this little party it was a, it was a fun party it was chill a6 always does it right. Yeah. Like it's a, it's it's a good good environment. All right, let's get into the rest of it. Yeah. So the next morning we wake up, we go for an early morning run. We it was kind of funny because we met Jeff Dengate outside our hotel. The uh, it's not the first time we've talked to Jeff. So former podcast guest. Yeah, not totally weird. 
but we were there and he's like oh you guys running tomorrow we're like yeah easy miles uh, you know just gonna run around ladybird maybe do like five miles and he was like cool uh I'll, I'll join you guys and it was really casual so i didn't make much of it so we're getting ready in the morning we're going down we're in the hotel lobby strolling up there comes jeff dengate and so uh he actually made it we went for a run did it he was wearing a t-shirt and shorts and i was in a long sleeve and a jacket yeah <laughs> I was like, okay. And then he made fun of us for wearing long sleeves and jackets. Yeah. And, and after that, I did dress lighter. <laughs> Keep in mind, the first day was that 80 degrees that you were talking about. And then the next three days I to was say a that. low of like... Like when we woke up, it was 30. 30? Yeah. It dropped 40 degrees overnight, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. So we, we it was a chilly run. But I have to say, I'm actually kind of glad it was cool. Yeah. We were inside perfect. most of the day. And for running, it was, like, perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was good. Do, all right, let, should we get into the event? Yeah. Do you want to talk about just, like, the most exciting stuff? And yeah. then Because if we can't go through brand, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do you want to start with the most exciting stuff? Yeah. All right, let's do it. I mean, my most exciting shoe of the entire thing, do you want to hear that? That we can't talk about? We can talk about it. We just can't show it or uh, anything like that. Okay. But definitely, I think it's going to be a game changer. It's going to be crazy. I almost think it's too good to be true. It is. It's going to, I don't even know if it's going to be legal in any setting. Yeah. It, they basically took all the rules. Just tell us what it is. Adidas, Adi Zero, Primex Strung 2. They said, we're just going to, as long as we're going to go illegal, we're going all the way. So it has... Two carbon plate. Well, it's one carbon plate, but it's in a taco shape. And in between the front part of the taco is a very soft, resilient, explosive foam. <laughs> so it basically makes a spring in the forefoot. And when you come down on it, when I when I tried the shoe on, I had to do it. I jammed a nine, a size nine on my foot, and I jogged across that floor. And the it was a size nine? Yeah. I thought it was a size ten. Maybe it was. It was a nine. I was like, yeah. oh, it was a nine? Okay. okay. The rebound on this thing, my knee shot up. Like, one of the things I'm always thinking about when I run is I need to lift my knees more, especially when I get tired at the end of the race, I start shuffling. And I was like, this thing, I will bounce my way to a PR in these. I swear to God. Uh, I, I had no doubt. Like, Tigger, Tigger's tail bouncing along on that thing. The pop off the toe when you hit the... When you hit the uh, dude, it's ridiculous. Four foot right, it was just insane. It's, and, I ahead. mean, you're not even kidding. I I watched you put the shoe on. I watched you kind of run down the, you know, a couple steps and back, and your face lit up like, I mean, he was trying to figure out how he could get them for Houston. Yeah, <laughs> which they won't even be close to done by then. I did, still did think you, I'm gonna you, I'm gonna make no. some calls. Um, it. There's no, it's not even, that was like the only version of the shoe that exists or something. I'll take those and I'll cut a hole in the big toe. <laughs> um, the the way that that shoe felt underfoot was insane. Like it it felt like a toy. Like, you know when you're a kid and you had like a pogo ball or whatever? It, it's it, Dude, it's this freaking tramp, it's a spring. Yeah. It's like, it, that's all it is. It's everything that we thought, The remember when the first Alpha Flight came out, everyone was like, oh, there's two plates and pods and three plates mm -hmm. maybe. Like, that's what you thought it was going to be. That's what it is and in real life. And yeah. it works. It, it's amazing. It's going to be. It's, it does make me wonder, is there any possibility Illy Kipchoge had a special pair of Alpha Flies? I don't know. On? But I, that, like, the Alpha Flies and Vapor Flies and everything else, that just feels like, it still feels like a running shoe. This, I'm like, I don't know. Is that actually, like, that's, is that cheating? And, like, it's, it's you're springing. It's a literal <laughs> spring. Like the carbon plate now is more of like a levered type, some energy. Right. Return. But that's like. This is a spray. Yeah. But it, it feels amazing. I love the strong upper and the new upper seems to, they seem to have worked it again out a little better. Um, yeah. I think it's just going to be an amazing shoe. It is. And okay. then I also like the other stuff that they showed. Adidas was, the, in my opinion, the number one. The number one brand. Which is interesting because typically they don't come to the running event for the running shoes. They've been there for the Terex yeah. um, side of things. But and the Terex side of things is another. Yeah. Well, you were into the new uh, Booth Light. 
Yeah, well, the Boost Light, which is going to be in one of their trail shoes, um, I think it's called the Soul Glide, and then the their new racing shoe that's coming out, I guess, I think this summer is uses trail racing. Yeah, trail racing uses the uh, Light Strike Pro has a plate has like has been used by their trail athletes to win like crazy like ruth croft to interview my podcast she won western states in that shoe last year uh, i think they had a third place at utmb it's like ridiculous so that's super exciting and then what the boston looks Bo- finally they, good it, again it maybe? finally looks good now I, I actually got out my boston levens yesterday and wore them around just to see mm-hmm. you know what it was that i'm hoping and I, I just think that there's going to be more Light Strike Pro under better the forefoot. <laughs> and it just looked a little slimmer down. I think it's going to bring back those people that, that like the Boston. Now, speaking of which, they gave us a shoe to take home and start testing that's already released now. You can probably go buy it today. S- but SL? The SL. Okay. Super, and the SL stands for Super Light. But um, I ran it this morning. You ran it this morning. Mm-hmm. And we're going to do our first impressions, but I'll give it up right now here. The It's... A traditional feeling. It's a good shoe. Like it feels like a traditional shoe. The people that like the Boston before they messed with it, the people who like like the Adios and stuff like that. It's a really nice feeling. Hundred and twenty dollar shoe. So the SL twenty was a previous version of that, right? Yeah. It, it was yeah, but it was so. I I don't think it's that close to what the SL twenty. SL twenty sucked. Yeah. So this is supposed to be your entry level into the Adios family. Okay. So this is $120. It's pretty basic. This is, I would say, you're going up against, like, the Pegasus. You're going up against, like, okay. the other shoes that are kind of, like, staples for daily training on the, on the, like, performance side. Yeah. I think it's the Adi Zero line. Adi Not Zero? Adios. Oh, did I call it Adios? Yeah. It is the Adi Zero. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Adi Zero SL. All right. Yeah. And that look cool. Boss look cool. What? Takumi said nine. It's just upper change, but looks to be better. Yeah. Looks great. I mean, you should say thank you. Not don't like you love that shoe the way it is. Yeah. True. Now you can totally. give it. You can give it shoe of the year. <laughs> yeah. Actually, perfect. <laughs> I finally, can't wait. Finally give it that. Uh. Yeah. What else was? What else was cool? Uh. I, I really stood out to you. The Saucony. Doing the uh, Convara Pro. Convara Pro does look what, interesting. That was interesting. What foam is in that? I didn't. You've got two foams. So you got the Power Run, just regular EVA. But on top of that, you got the Power Run PB. Oh. And then in between that is a carbon plate. Oh, I didn't realize I had a carbon plate in it. Yeah. But here's the thing I, I am very confused by the shoe because it does a couple things. One, the Convara is kind of a minimalist shoe. Yeah, it's <laughs> right. So why kind call of, it the Convara? Yeah. Then you bring in, okay, you've got the speed, endorphin speed. So this isn't an endorphin speed, so it's I guess it doesn't have the same geometry for the rocker midsole speed roll. The way I understood it was that they were trying to create a trainer that had a plate in it. A daily trainer yeah. with a plate. That's right. the speed. Is that yeah? Well, well, speed wasn't originally made for that though. I think people adopted. Yeah, it. they said speed should be used for tempo day, whereas this Convara That's is crazy. meant for like easy running, but everyday running with a. Plate. So is this supposed to be like an SC trainer type thing? I think so. Potentially, I it's, think it'll fit in that realm. It's confusing because it almost seems as if Saucony is like competing with herself with these shoes. Right, I do. But I think every brand does that, and I, I've. I don't think any brand has nailed it with the naming convention and like the structure of their shoe lineup. But it's also like, okay, so you have the endorphin line. Kimvara falls outside the endorphin line. So I'm guessing it's two different teams and, and stuff like that, but it's, it looks like a good shoe. I really appreciate Chad walking us through it. Um, the oh, Triumph have- is just a, a upper update. Right. So the, And it's a 42 millimeter stack in the heel for the Kimvara Pro. I really think that's something that once you was get it, it on your 42? Yeah, it looks thick. What's the other max shoe they're doing? The one that we took the picture down of? Oh, the Endorphin Elite. Elite. Yeah. That's a racer, though. Yeah. Okay. I think the Convara Can- Pro is going to be something that once you get it on your foot, you'll probably be able to differentiate between the speed and all that. But on paper, it's it's kind of tough to see where it fits in. 
Yeah. And, and that comes out summer 2023 for 160 or I'm sorry, for $180. Yeah. The other thing we saw was the RFG, the Triumph RFG, which is their recyclable, a more eco-friendly shoe. So they basically take out the upper is more of a cotton-based mesh. The midsole is made from, do they say corn? 55% bio-based, so probably. And it's actually a lot higher than a lot of other shoes. Like even all birds and are only like 48% bio. So it's a little bit heavier than the regular triumph, but I did kind of think like, why have two triumphs out? <laughs> and isn't that less sustainable than having no comment? Yeah. Just the one out. Um, but yeah, it's something um, I think it, maybe it's a test to see how, how it will do in the market. Yeah. It's the same price as a regular Triumph, so. You know what other brand was actually kind of exciting, but we didn't get to show any of it, I don't think, on. Mm. I Yeah, I think so. On looks to be They look like they're going track. the right direction. Yeah, they're yeah. going in the right direction. I also felt like, I'm going to say it. You can mark my words. Put a dot on your calendar. Two years from now, Mizuno is going to be super hot. I think you're right. I agree with you. No, <laughs> It's crazy. Yeah, I feel like um, they, it, and this is if it, their Japanese team is allowed to continue doing what they're doing. Their but, whole U.S. team is fired. <laughs> I don't no. know. I'm um, just kidding. I just don't want to hear from. I never, never hear from them. So yeah, I have no idea. The but the no, that one guy was cool. What was his name? Yeah, sorry. He, he, he yeah. I, I forget his name, but yeah, I know who you're talking about. Right. The mustache. Yeah. A lot of mustaches, by the way, Robert. Did you feel at home there? I did. It felt like I was with my people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so many mustaches. <laughs> and at the, the the gooder party had a circus team, so there was mustachio ladies there too. Mm. There wasn't. Okay. <laughs> I wish. But the Mizuno, I've been running in the Wave Rebellion Pro. I just did this past weekend, I did 17 miles in it. And I have to say, it's a really good shoe. Again, we'll get the. Uh, I should probably start typing up the review and and doing the video review. Yeah, it's um a little bit. I it fits true to size, but for some reason, my big toe on my left side was kind of getting jammed. So I don't know. You may have to go up a half size, but when I'm standing still, it looks like my toe's in the right place. Got toe jam. Pretty much. That's, the toe jam always sounds like the worst, most disgusting thing to Well, have, then right? when Pearl Jam came out, I was like, that sounds like toe jam. You're right, yeah. And then one of the best video games, Toe Jam and Earl. I was, yeah. Was that the, was that the worm? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were in space. Yeah. What? Why does Raspberry Jam sound so good, but Toe Jam sounds so gross? Well, jam why are you putting them together? Because one, one is that. a toe. Jam bands. <laughs> 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 anyway, right. so the Mizuno, uh, the Wave Rebellion Pro, some of the things that they're doing with that, I think, are going to make it into the mainstream shoes. The foam is really good. The feel of the shoe is really good. The thought process behind it is smart. Yeah, they um, can. They got. I think they're. I think they're coming around for sure. Which would be exciting. It would be because people people want to love Mizuno. People want Mizuno to do I, cool things. I feel like they're they're Asics from five years ago. Like yeah. where Asics was like, okay, we're going to start popping some stuff off, and you're like. Hmm, this looks interesting. Yeah. I, I mean, they have the name and the legacy to really build on. They can just get that going. Yeah. Meg, wait, so what you said on is what's, what do you like? A, I mean, obviously they're getting more stack. I feel like that <laughs> hardness has gone away that I've like the. There's one shoe that doesn't even have a speed board. Yeah. The cloud eclipse yeah. was that. Is that the one without the board? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's coming in the fall or late summer it's they're basically doing what we said they had to do which was like if they're going to succeed this is what they're gonna have to do get rid of the speed board make a softer foam kind of get rid of, rid of the cloud pots which is exactly what yeah. they're doing like because that that shoe had a midsole that was basically just like slits in it yeah for cloud pods <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, it looked pretty good and then there was another one that looked really good um i forget the first the name of the first one that we saw the, the first one was the cloud eclipse. Yeah. Then there was the cloud surfer cloud and surfer. the cloud venture, which is trail. Yeah. Okay. And I, does it not have a plate in the eclipse? I thought it was the second one that didn't have the plate. I thought there was a speed board in the No eclipse. speed board in the cloud surfer. Right. Oh, but in the eclipse okay. there is. Yeah. yeah. But they moved it further away from the foot. Right. And they put it's, more cushion. So it's it used to be like right underneath the struggle board. Yeah. So now it's kind of like, that's kind of what they did for the cloud go, I think, to make it softer. Yeah. 
So that was good. Um, you know who else I thought had some nice stuff? Craft. Yeah. Like, they seem... The shoes look cool, first of all. Some of the cooler shoes we saw there. And they're doing, like, a nitrogen-infused midsole, which, again, I haven't tried it. We already thought their midsoles kind of sucked in the past for the CTM Carbon Ultra. Just kind of, like, firm, dead. Yeah, dead is a good word for it. Like, <laughs> when you ran on it, it just felt like thunk, thunk, Like thunk. a block. Yeah. But, so that's, I'm kind of excited to see what, if they've changed that. Okay. It looks like they have. Quick question for you. Who has better colors? Hoka or New Balance? Personally, I think Hoka. Mm. I don't know. Some of those trail the New trail Balance. New Balance, yeah. Like some of those tans and. The more trail? Yeah. That was cool. The more trail design is one of the best yeah. out there. Gorgeous. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and say I would wear that as a lifestyle show. That's yeah. what it says, Danny. Yeah. Well, I'm curious. I don't know if I'm going to run in it. Like, a, you're, as far as the trail reviews go, how much demand do you feel like there is for a soft, cushy trail shoe? Or is that dangerous on the trail? Yeah, I mean, it depends. Like, obviously, the Speed Goat's one of the best selling trail shoes. And so there's definitely. That's what everybody's trying to replicate in some okay. ways, the speed goat, I think. Um, but yeah, I, I think it reaches a point too where <laughs> too much stack is not good. What's the difference between the speed goat and like the challenger? Uh, I think this, well, I think the challenger is actually the the most. Okay. But Didn't you come in second place in a 50K wearing the challenger? I think it was like third, but that's what, what my choice was when I was running trails. I think the challenger is the most like aggressive of all the shoes i always get the challenger mixed challenger i thought was a clifton with lugs. yeah that's basically what it what i remember it being yeah yeah which is accurate um so the speed goat's just a little bit less stack yeah and i think it's more um more built for like the long long haul like as far as like and it has the vibra mega grip and i'm not sure i was hoping to see it. more from hoka at the event they had a lot of updates that were like colors and their colors look great. There is some bright, you know, they're, they sticking with those bright contrasting colors. The um, rocket, the rocket X is cool. I th I'm excited for that. I'm a little nervous for that. Why? I thought it, I didn't see it offering anything that's not already out there. Well, the right. It's like, Oh cool. You have a ratio now. Well, you should have had that two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm just excited. They have one now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Alphine had a great run in it That's in New true. York. That's so true. Steph Bruce in Boston. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it'll be pretty good. I did like that they had Tectonics 2 coming out because that was the trail. Love that as a trail shoe and a road shoe. Yeah, well, I'm hoping they just take that technology and make a road shoe. Yeah, I don't know why they they don't literally just take the lugs off of it. There you go. Man. I mean, going to be honest, at the Hoka booth, I was kind of drawn to uh, slides. Those the slides. <laughs> Jared was like, but I mean, see, here's the problem with the slides. I would have trouble picking out what color I want. I know. Because the colors are really great, and they look great when mm -hmm. you see them all next to each other. But then when you buy one, you just have the one color. Maybe that's their whole ploy is that you buy all of them. Yeah, and then you're going to have to walk around with all of them uh -huh. just so people know that there are more options. I do like One that. color on each side, which Puma did for their, um, what shoe was that? Their... It, yeah, all the ratios. So they had it for both the Nitro, uh, Deviate Nitro 2 Elite, yeah. and they did it for the Fast R. Wait, they had what? Two one, different colored shoes, like one for left and red right. Red was... Red and blue. That's the thing that'll never catch on. You don't... <laughs> yeah. You don't think so? No. I think the novelty of it will. It like, won't be something that just you'll... just a novelty. Yeah, you, like, you know how, like, uh, for a while, I, I was in love with black shoes. Like you couldn't get enough. Now all it's black white, shoes. and then you stop waiting tables. Yeah, and now <laughs> now it's white shoes. Like I love seeing the the whites and the off whites and the tans and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Jarrett used to hate the gray shoes, and guess what? Jarrett's coming back around to gray. It's it's weird. This is how you know these things come full circle. I, I mean, are we going to be wearing bell bottoms soon? Don't but, even joke about that. Yeah. <laughs> I I like. I mean, even the super comp uh, that. The SC Trainer 1s in the triple gray. I'm like, why do I like those so much? Because I wrote a whole thing about how much I, I hate it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've, yeah. and here you That's are. That's ridiculous. <sighs> you know, uh, but you're right. Itahara Art did uh, custom drawings on whatever the white shoe 
from Asics was. Coming whatever out, that could be. Coming out February 1st, 2023. <laughs> we have yeah. no idea. Yeah, whatever that shoe is, we, we can't same have time any frame, idea. Same time, time frame a certain other shoe comes out every February. <laughs> yeah, and guess what, Robbie? Your pair is in there, yeah. uh, all whites. But anyway, Itahara Art was doing custom ones, which kind of inspired me. I think I'm going to draw on my all white pair, even though it'll ruin an all white pair of shoes, and I love the all white. But I think it'd be fun to kind of like. It's a canvas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're watching the YouTube video, you can see on Meg's sweatshirt. Oh, yeah. The yeah, tiger. I do like the tiger. Which is from uh, what, you know, what he drew. Well, I, I have a quick question. What? You know how there's Chinese New Year? Uh-huh. Does Japan also do? I don't know. Uh, like the. Oh, look it up. Zodiac. Is it Zodiac? What do you call it? Or, I guess it's a Chinese Zodiac. It's the same as ours. Japanese New Year, Sunday, January 1st. No, but I'm saying, do they do the year of, like, is it is it the year of a Zodiac? It says they do use a 12-year Zodiac that is very similar to the Chinese Zodiac. Okay, so, so. next year will be Year of the Rabbit. Uh, maybe. It might be a little bit different. I'm not sure. I hope it's the Year of the Rabbit. Yeah. Anyway, so that was cool. Obviously, New Balance. I was um, kind of hopeful for the Skechers stuff that we saw. Hold up. Go back to New Balance real okay. quick. I'm a little skeptical of the SC trainer too. Okay. I'll just say it's But we have up. to say we found out <coughs> the initial measurement of the SC trainer one when we're talking about stack overestimated the stack height. So but it did hasn't it. lost eight. Wait millimeters. a second though, but here's the thing that I don't understand. So they measured to message that better. They they, they <laughs> they're measuring the insole, the strobel board, the foam, and the outsole. And that's how they came up with 47 millimeters of stack. Yeah. Saying this next one is? 39. 39. Are they not measuring the midsole, the strobel board, or not the, the I'm guessing insole, the, the strobel the board? I'm guessing the insole is not included, would be my guess. But I have no well, idea. Anyway, uh, for everyone listening, they reduced the stack in the SE Trainer V2. It, but it loses an ounce of weight. It loses an ounce of weight. The upper looks a little bit more structured, um, but it is now, quote unquote, legal. So it's 39, they said 39.99 uh, measured. Well, I, don't, I don't understand why. I, I really, really hope that, you know, this doesn't change much in the shoe. Cause Same. The experience, the running experience. Yeah. I mean, I loved if I would have been perfectly fine with just an, you know, maybe uh, a slightly cleaner upper, you know, for the SC trainer one. I, I thought the SC trainer's upper was pretty I clean. Loved it. I loved it too. People watched, I love it. I don't understand why maybe people. Maybe the heel are, thing some people yeah, had problems with. I maybe, didn't have an issue with it. I didn't. I thought that was one of the best uppers of the year. But I don't know. I, I love that shoe. And if, if, if it does change, I'm hopeful that it isn't. I might have to stock up on the one. So the foam is also slightly less dense. So a little less stack, a little less dense, but it's still yeah. the same It's starting structure. to sound like the SE Elite. Yeah, yeah. people did comment like, that. I like that upper, you know, what we saw in the SE Trainer 2, that yeah. upper looked to me more comfortable than I found the SE Elite 1 upper. It looked more traditional. Yeah, yeah. which is what I want. So, I mean, I'd race in that if, if it is that lighter weight, but it's still a good It's not supposed to be a racing shoe, though. <laughs> trainer. SC Trainer. That was the whole th I thing. That's why people loved it, because it was a right. shoe that could, see, you know, just, like, save your legs. You could log huge miles in. Maybe it still is. We'll have know. to we'll wait. See. We'll have Comes to wait. Comes out July 2023. Hopefully we get some pairs earlier and can test them out. Yeah. All right. I, mean, I don't hate that it loses weight, for sure. Yeah. So let, let's talk a little about Skechers. Yeah, Skechers. Speed, but it's not the Speed Freak. It's the, the Razor beast. Beast. and the Beast. The Beast. I didn't actually, I didn't personally see that because I was doing some other okay. stuff. So tell the, me about it. They're still it. wild with their designs. Like, it's, you're going to know it's a Skecher from 100 yards. Right. Like Lime Green. Looks like something Nickelodeon kids. Like, if you were yeah. at the set of Nickelodeon, they'd be like, design a shoe that's radical. Yeah. And then you can win it on Global Guts. So this is one of those shoes Actually, that, that they decent. said was for that 215 to That's 245 marathoner, which I think is kind of strange that brands are moving towards <sighs> this, like, more. this is intended for this time, like this pace. I, I that mean, is weird, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I this is where I feel like Justin Jobert has 
did I say is this Dustin? Dust, yeah. Um, has to get yeah. That's that's the that's the sketcher's look. Um, the he has to get involved here because we're starting to hear. We were hearing hey, plated ratios. They did a test and they're like, your efficiency improves more if you're not an efficient runner with these shoes. The cushioning helps you recover faster. Ah, blah blah blah. It's good for all paces. Now we're starting to hear. Well, you can't get the torque on the plate if you're not running at certain paces and like, the shoes aren't. And I don't understand. The only reason I can understand the companies wanting to sell less of the shoes is if they're expensive to produce and they'd rather sell the average marathoner an average shoe. I don't I guess. I mean, Solomon's doing the same thing. We're not really allowed to talk about that shoe coming up, but it's the same idea behind it, is that there's a shoe for people under three hours and a shoe for people over. And that there's a, they're saying that they've done tests and there's a difference and they're going to get the craziest thing. We've read other things that I say know. the opposite. It's, it's like anything. You can find research to promote whatever you but want. But the craziest believe. thing was after they told us that you need something for sub three and you don't need it for over three, the shoe that they showed us for over three had more of the thing that they said you didn't oh, need yeah. than the other one. <laughs> like, it's like, what you're, I don't understand. That'd be interesting. Yeah. But the sketchers, either way, the hyper beast looks pretty rad. Um, the, you know, me, the max for five was like one of my favorite shoes of all well, time. That's a problem now, isn't it? It is. Cause now I think they've changed it too much where, I'm not sure. Okay, I only tried it on. Right I think there. you're gonna like the ride now. But right, so I think the ride eleven is is, is the, the Max, Max Road six five or six. <laughs> yeah. The Ma ride eleven felt awesome, and it's gonna be one hundred twenty dollars coming out in April. One hundred twenty. Well, explain what they did. They took the they took the Max Road and they actually made it even more Max, and they exaggerated the rocker like that. Yeah, which I don't know. Need exaggerated. <laughs> it's pretty exact. Like that. Pretty aggressive already. Well, it felt like. A, it was, it almost put pressure on my arch when I landed just jogging in it because I was like, it was so extreme, the arch. Yeah. But then, I mean, that's the good news, I guess, is the ride becomes what you loved in the Max Road. Yeah, I think it's going to be, I think people are going to love the ride. When they, I mean, the like it's the same stack as the Max Road. 34 in the heel, 28 in the forefoot. Yep, it is the same stack. And just a more plush ride. It's, I think that's going to be an awesome like daily trainer for people 120 bucks you can't beat that the max road six is going to be 140 um yeah that's cool one thing i noticed that was kind of a trend was that brands are investing more in the sock liners sketchers right, was totally. one of them that was doing that uh puma was one that had the pbax uh sock liner and i'm wondering how that like so World athletics when they measure does that include the sock line or does not include the it sock does. does does not does it, it does. does well it's everything from top to bottom so let okay. me give you a scenario I put in a really thin that's what sock I was, liner that's what I was. and then when I get ready to race the next day I put in a, a thicker sock liner <laughs> they measure it right after you get finish the race compression <laughs> so, I mean yeah but I'm thinking now with these fancy sock liners, like that seems like a you just swap out of those. You know what you do now? You attach the sock liner to the sock, so when you hand them the shoe, <laughs> it doesn't have a sock liner. In there. You put it in that's, your sock. Oh, in the sock, yeah. yeah, yeah. They should make it's it. in the sock, dude. Someone needs this. Anyone listening that wants to do that, come up with a sock that's not just max Padded. cushion, but actually sock like so, so pee back sock. That'd be insane. Like uh, <laughs> you put in like a nice like the sock itself has like a cushion. Um, hey, we just came up with something. Yeah. Just call our attorney. Dude, running. I didn't realize the, the Skechers Speed Beast was $250, though. That's well, it's it. only for 215 to 245 marathon. But also, so. guess <laughs> guess what? Guess what? Skechers is usually on sale. That is true. <laughs> It'll I, be 55 I just don't know how bucks. you're going to, like, you, like, stay in your lane. Your Skechers, are you, really, if someone's going to buy the $250 shoe over, like. An Alpha Flyer. Yeah, ever. Like that, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. So we didn't really talk about Puma. They, we saw, we're, we know that there's a female specific shoe coming out from New Balance. I actually don't like women specific shoes because they tend to make them 
like thinner in the heel, which I don't want, and firmer because they believe, or whatever, the studies show we need more stability, and I hate that. I, I still have yet to hear a woman who cares that there's a women's specific. Sh- like, are, are they only well, made for When women. we talked to the Helix guy, uh, Jeffrey, he was like, we have talked to women, and did you know that only... 60% of women say they're satisfied with their shoes versus men who are 80% satisfied with their shoes or there's it's some differential. There could be so many variables. There, right? there could be so many variables because it could come down to just color. I don't know. Like, I'm sure they the dudes, try. Dudes are like, yeah. Yeah, that works. works. <laughs> how, many, <laughs> how many people do you see running in freaking monarch, air monarchs? <laughs> like, yeah. It half like, they don't give a shit. Uh, well, I'm not going to talk to whether or not we need Anyways. women's specific shoes being yeah, the guy here. Sorry. Sorry. But, but I will say Puma has this, like, I thought maybe it'd be a project where they did the XX and they'd be done. But no, they XXV2 is coming out. Yeah, XXV2. Was that a successful shoe for them? Did you ask them? I didn't ask, but you know, we didn't give it a good review. Right? And I so. did think it was funny that a guy was like, I didn't know that was going to be a women's shoe. I tested that for Puma. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he might have tested the XY. No, no. <laughs> I get it, though. Um, that's why it is called the XX. Um, anyway, uh, so Puma also, I'm actually, I love the DV8. Um, that came out the dv too. Yeah, and a lot of people love that. Yeah, they're that one. they're putting more cushion into the dv Elite too. So I'm excited to see how that one works out. As much as I do like the wildness of the Fast R, I would love it if the dv Elite too, because I felt like the dv Elite too Wait, let me down. How do we not have the that shoe yet? The DV Elite Two, I don't know. It's already out. Is it Puma? Well, you know, I think when I don't know when Todd Maybe asked. It no, us, it is. I'm pretty positive. Yeah, Todd asked me. Uh, Todd's uh, the uh, project manager for uh, Puma. Yeah, and he was like, when we needed to do the DV Elite Two review, Nitro. He's like, do you get? Well, how come you guys haven't done the review? I said, we haven't gotten the shoe, and he's like, oh. Okay, and then a week later, we got the shoe. So maybe we just need to let them know we need the shoe. <laughs> we also yeah, have that fast forward shoe, which is that 5K, 10K, crazy looking one. I mean, we're not really racing 5Ks, 10Ks, but. I'd like to just try it though. Yeah. Okay. It looks wild. Uh, another one that looked kind of cool was the Reebok Float Zig. Hey, that did one you did get, look cool. Did you already get your sweatshirt? I did, yeah. And your your hoodie? It, I a jacket or something? I got a hoodie and a jacket. Yeah. From Reebok. He, Will sent it to yeah. us that quick. No, it was like next day. And I have to say, I love the jacket. The jacket's so nice. Kimmy, Kimmy was like, you could probably just go to Goodwill and get that jacket right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, you totally could. <laughs> it, but that's what I, I like about it. It reminds me of my Deodora Windbreakers. Yeah. It's like that 90s Definitely baggy. Is. Yeah, it's cool. Um, but the float zig, I was like, this shoe actually looks pretty Pretty, that might might have been one of my favorite shoes that I saw there. Really, I like I like the look of it. It looked cool. It's got a bunch of holes in it. It kind of has that. No, it's like a Zigtech on, on look. No, yeah. that that it's, came before right. on and Zig- on. Zigtech was there's mm. the, ever somebody has to know what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, it was pop. What like 10, 15 years ago? Zigtech. I want to say early two thousands. Early two thousands. Yeah, and what it was was the midsole did a z- like a zigzag yeah. all the way down. Yeah. And now they've taken that and they've actually, uh, uh, here's what I like about it. I mean, they still do it in other shoes now even. Yeah, but they put it in this Uh shoe. Yeah, there it is. That's the old. It's a very popular Reebok thing to do. Yeah, but what I like about it, Robbie, is you already have a lightweight foam. And then with the cutouts and the way that that works, keeps it even lighter. Mm -hmm. It looks like a fun, fast, light shoe. Yeah, and I think the design is actually pretty cool. It's definitely, not, definitely 90s kid design. Yeah, I'm not huge with the Zig like design in general, but I thought they did a pretty good job in that shoe. Um, when Did he say when we get our hands on that one? I don't know when that one is. Um, let me see. Zig, that's not till like fall of the 2023. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, because he wanted to highlight that one. That's interesting, though. What's the name of it? Float Zig. Float Zig. I can see like Robbie Zig. now smoking a cigarette with his float zig. Yeah. Sig. Clo- float zig. Clove cigarette. Yeah. Clo- float zig. I like that. Oh. 
Um, did you smoke clove cigarettes back in college? I tried them. Yeah, I was gonna say that if art school, you have to, right? Yeah, I mean, like we had to smoke every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know what was kind of cool? So one of the guys who's working for Puma now in the design department, uh, he's like, "Hey, I just want to meet you guys because I heard you're from Baltimore." I went to school in Baltimore. I said, oh, where'd you, where'd you go to school? He goes, Maryland Institute College of Art. I oh. said, so did I. And so we bonded. I get, I mean, nice. we probably went 20 years apart. But, um, you know, we were talking. And it's it's kind of cool because it's not known for its industrial design. Right. And here he is designing Puma, cool. Puma running shoes. Now. Did you share a Dejarum clove? We did, we did the secret handshake. And then I did some nude modeling while he drew me. Nice. No. <laughs> so weird <laughs> you always have to make it so weird at first i thought you were going to say he des- designed some dejarum packaging for um their for the clove cigarettes you know those were illegal the, in maryland this is they had good package not this design but they had some good packaging back in the day do you know they made those in me illegal yeah obama made them illegal oh was it Obama? yeah because i this is like you know 14 years ago i smoked them at the time and he was like he drew he made them clove cigarettes, illegal, like flavored ones. So you could only get the cigars, which are way worse for you. Why would you make them illegal though? Because supposedly, supposedly like that was like packaging for kids, you know? So, um, uh, yeah, that was the one to serve. Why can't one. you just make, um, that was my favorite one. Why can't you just make those, the packaging illegal? I don't know, but yeah, anyway, so it sucked for me at the time. Then I just switched to regular cigarettes. Yeah, I heard so that thanks, it, it, Obama. <laughs> it made people's lungs bleed or something. I don't know, but hopefully. That's why I thought they could win. There was some stuff like that that went around. I never With had issues, but. Going back to shoes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, earlier we were talking about how there were shoes that, you know, we knew that were there that brands didn't talk about. And one of those brands was Saucony, who showed us some of their upcoming exciting shoes, but other ones that we knew were there. Uh, Didn't they show up at the party? They were at the Saucony party on, there was an entire wall of all of the shoes. And I was just like, is this, is this a test? Are and they're giving us? you alcohol it's, at the same time. They were testing us and we failed. Oh, we failed <laughs> real bad. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing. You give somebody alcohol <laughs> and you put them in front of. Oh, shoe, a wall of shoes. Of, yeah, shoes that we're not supposed to know about. You guys know that they're on embargo because you're... Well, no, but the reason the whole reason I posted the Endorphin Elite was because Running Warehouse put out their Endorphin Elite video. That so you're day. like, hey, that makes sense. I assume that they know yeah. even more ahead of us that when it's out. So. Right. No, I understand your reasoning. What I'm saying, though, is you guys kind of know what's under embargo and what's not under embargo, whereas the general public oh, right, has right. no clue. So I'm there at a party. I, psh, I'm drinking. Hey, there's all the new shoes. They should just put tags on the shoes, no photos. Under the shoes you don't want photos of. That people are well, drinking, that's what they're gonna take photos of. Yeah, no photos photo. Yeah. yeah they're right. gonna publish that ASAP. I, right. I thought they looked they looked pretty good though. I liked uh I mean How a lot light of did them. they feel? Yeah, the endorphin elite has me real intrigued. You didn't we didn't see that. You took a photo of it. I, that was the shoe we were out. Oh that's yeah, we, we did. Yeah, that was we still I, I thought I mean the the Convara looked pretty sweet. The pro? Yeah, no the regular. The regular. Oh. A lot yeah. different than the regular Kavara. interesting that will be interesting um yeah that was cool and what, what was the other one the, even the ride and the guide mm-hmm. oh topo athletic that's what i forgot to mention what about that they have a super lightweight shoe that looks like the rebel yeah basically yeah it could be like the rebel that everyone loves back in and back in the new form <laughs> i would be a little upset if i was new balance and i saw that shoe because the upper looks a lot like the rebel it, the upper looks like the rebel the Thought process behind the shoe is the Rebel. It is basically the Rebel. But it's PBAX or PBA powered, whatever that means. Yeah. It was weird because when I was talking to, it was either Tony or somebody who mentioned that the shoe, like it's not going to last very long. Like they're like the cushioning. Well, neither did the Rebel for a lot of people, but yeah. well, <laughs> no, the upper I, blew out. Yeah, but. not that, but because the, the, mati- like the midsole would compress or something. Mm-hmm. That I reminds mean, me of the Hyperion yeah. one of the fifty miles, or, or no, no, that Hyperion thing. Elite. That thing felt the same as the first time you put it on as it will oh, yeah. when when the Earth ends. Oh, okay. Well, I I mean, I thought the I thought it looked sweet. It does. Care if they rip off the Rebel? Who cares? No, I do think it looks sweet, and it's super light. Yeah, it's like, it was like six and a half ounces or something. 
ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and then hmm, what else? North Face, you didn't talk about them. Oh, they yeah, seem to have uh, like yeah. North Face used to be like always. I felt like behind and, and it, the times, yeah. and now I feel like they might be up front. Yeah, they're they're definitely elevated themselves to like the top of the trail game because they've had some pretty good finishes in the the Vector Pro, which is a shoe that uh, is coming out this year, early the next year. Uh, Taylor's been running in it; he loves it. It's carbon plated. Um, yeah, trail trail racing shoe. There's like three in the ser- in the Vector series. Effective the previous the first attempt at carbon plate it was like the first carbon plate trail shoe it was real it wasn't a good shoe, but it seems like they've figured it out this time around. So that's cool for for the trail people. Um, so of, of the trail stuff, you and Taylor looked at most of it. Top brands have usually been Ultra, um, yeah, uh, Topo, uh, the. Topo, Topo has some good stuff Hoka. coming. Yeah, the Tecton X2 is definitely going to be up there. There's no like, but like I thought the Terex line looked like it will all of a sudden jump in there. Yeah, Terex for sure is going to be. In the past, the Terex line really the Terex Speed Ultra was the only shoe that we really loved from Adidas. The rest felt like clunk, clunky tanks. New Balance seemed to bring some new stuff to the table. Yeah, and oh, then that was the thing. Puma had a lot. New Balance in the trail side is coming out with a Super Comp racer on the like a Super Comp series trail shoe with that carbon plate. Now, I'm interested to see if it's just like slapping an outsole on like a trail shoe. You know what I mean? Like if it. Or if it's built for trail specifically, so that'll be. But that has potential to be up there with the, uh, the rock. Or sorry, the Tecton X and the some, some of the Adidas stuff. And we didn't really talk about the Ultra stuff, but I felt like they had some shoes that I'm actually interested in trying. And that's yeah. something like the the Slim Fit stuff looks better. The Riviera, I think it was called. Yeah, the Rivera. But Rivera. like looking from the YouTube comments, the Ultra people are, they're not happy. The fans. About what? You know, the the more traditional, they the more. W- they want the wider. Yeah. They're like, this is bullshit. The slim fit's cheap. Like, get, <laughs> like stop giving us these slim shoes. Like, all this stuff. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, you're finally coming around, Ultra. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> You're We're on the opposite end. Um, and then I guess last. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, Brooks. I was waiting for you to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I am enjoying running in the Hyperion Max, but you should probably preface that. Uh, I mean, uh, it's yeah. not a Max shoe. Yeah, it what it is is the firmer Hyperion Tempo. It's basically the Hyperion Elite without a plate in it. Yeah, which we had said the Hyperion Elite is a very nice daily training shoe, not a race day shoe. So now I feel like, hey, there's a very nice, lightweight, up tempo, daily trainer. They probably wouldn't call it. They're probably calling it a racer, but the Hyperion Max, the Levitate. I've always had a problem with because I felt like the midsole was heavy and clunky. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like I haven't seen the stats on the new one. The, the problem. Is, everything looks the same. It's like it's not like I, I don't feel like their shoes are evolving. It's, well, I mean, I think it was, we were very shocked when we let off the video and it was the ghost. The ghost. It's like, this shoe's already out now for like a month, I think. Yeah. And then the. Which I thought I was looking at the new ghost because that's right. how little the changes are usually in the ghost. And so I'm like, well, when does this come out? <laughs> He's like, it's already thing. out. I'm here's like, my thing too, is that the Hyperion, Hyper, the Hyperion Tempo 2, which is now just called Hyperion. They're dropping the tempo. That shoe, when when does that come out, Meg? The Hyperion Tempo. The Hyperion. The, the Hyperion. July first, dude. That's three over three years later than the first Hyperion Tempo. That's crazy. <laughs> three years Especially between since it, versions. It wasn't that much of a. It's, it's like literally just shoe. like uh, yeah, nitrogen infused foam, upper bump, done. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what's going on with that, and then the. The same with the Hyperion Max. I think that's supposed to be their like exciting shoe. I don't know. Maybe there's something else coming. But that's and that comes out in a month, January 1st. But it's still, it's just literally four millimeters more of the Hyperion Tempo. 
then I'm like, what's the point of getting either? Like, why do you even have both of them? Well, I, I think that the Hyperion is a little tamed down. Like it's not like specifically for racing. It's just like a, if you want that nice nitrogen infused midsole, that's your daily trainer. Yeah. The thing that's crazy. Okay. So, uh, and also a lot of the shoes are now you have three different versions of the same shoe. So you get like, say you get the levitate, for example, you get the levitate normal levitate GTS levitate stealth fit stealth fit levitate stealth fit GTS. Yeah. It, which four different versions of the same shoe. Well, I guess stability, they try to streamline it by not making a stability and not, but now it's almost more confusing. Yeah. But the, so, but here's what I'm thinking. This is, again, this is still crazy to me. The Hyperion, the only thing that, it's the same midsole as the last version. I, I'm pretty sure. And so it's really just an updated upper and some more outsole rubber. I'm like, whatever. I think it's actually cheaper. It's 140. I think it used to be 150. The uh, the Catamount too actually looked, they look very cool. The trail shoe from Brooks. Um, Cause that was like a really cool trail shoe. Just they needed to fix the upper on it. And it looks like they did that. So that, that actually did look very promising in the trail department. Um, other than that, that was about it. We did look at their trail gear, which actually looked kind of nice. All right. So anything else we got to cover? I guess we had a good time at the Brooks. Well, we went to the Saucony and Gooder after parties. We went out they, to dinner nice. with uh, New, New Balance, Balance and then ended up at uh, what seemed to be the industry party at Speakeasy that night. Mm-hmm. and uh that was on the night before the brooks party and then we went to the brooks party which at, was yeah we had the pizza what was the pizza oh, via 313 i mean it's the best pizza it uh, really is i didn't know i love detroit style but apparently i love detroit style pizza it's good yeah it's, it's my one contribution it, it's that place is one of my, my favorite pizza places yeah i love it and then sad i missed it well we can go again next year but uh we went to the Brooks party. At that point, I'd probably been a little too loose. Oh, really? Yeah, we got we we had beers and stuff at three one three. Then we went to another bar that was the weirdest situation. Oh, it was it was uh, all decked out like Christmas decorations inside, and there was a fake Santa coming out of the wall. But there was like a prom party or something that came in. Um, I think that was just like a wedding party. Me, I don't know, but so. Somebody bought us shots. Was that you? No, that was Brandon. Oh, it was Brandon. Brandon bought shots. So we did that. Then we headed over to the Brooks oh. party. With where, y- we had, boy. where we had another 57 Trulies. I actually played it, played it cool that night. I, I didn't have that much yeah. to drink. 57 Trulies. And I, then. I went out to dinner separately. I only had one beer because they're $8 each. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, I mean, 57 Trulies, and then at uh, at the Brooks party, someone from Brooks handed us two shots of uh, Don Julio 1942, which was delicious. Where was I at? Yeah, you were not there. You missed it. I got that one. And I didn't know, what he, at that point, I'd been drinking a lot, and I didn't know what he handed me, so I did it like a shot. <laughs> so what, what a it? waste. I'm glad, I'm glad that didn't happen. What a waste. Because one more drink than I had that night, and it would have been a bad day. How about night. you, Meg? How was your uh, your night in? I was feeling very hungover the next day. <laughs> Any other details? No. Okay. All right. Um, uh, it's always good to see Meg having. I do want to apologize. Hair, fully letting her hair down. <laughs> I met one of the New Balance uh, designers, shoe designers, at the party that uh, Paul introduced me to, and but at that point I had had so much to drink that I was like. All I remember telling them your honest thoughts about their. <laughs> I probably I, I I may have said something about the tongue and the more before, but, um, and I'm like that deservedly guy, that guy yeah. doesn't want to hear it. Um, I, what I do want to say is, hey, it was a great shoe, and it won our Max Cushion Shoe of the Year, and uh, you're doing a great job. <laughs> yeah, thanks to Jared giving it the best wide foot. Shoes of oh, the year always. Did he give it to the more? Did he give it to the more? No, he gave it to the trainer. More was the runner up. Is that right? Uh, either that or you don't know. I was either that. Our or friend at 50. our friend at New Balance wouldn't have been happy unless we'd given them a sweep from top to bottom. New <laughs> oh, <sorry>. won the year. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, aren't you glad you got something? He's like, ah, this is ridiculous. We didn't get this shoe. I was like, yeah, okay. 
All right. Yeah, we should wrap That's it enough up. enough shoe nonsense for one day. Thanks for everyone following along. If you haven't, make sure you go to our YouTube channel where there's every single video of that we're allowed to show. Talk to. Yeah. Uh, and that more we'll coming. have more coming. Yeah. And then also, hey, if you want to sign up for Grit, we have we ended up selling out of the first premium, but we put it back up for a lowered price if you want to sign up and, and participate in the contest. And uh, you can still get the beanie and the sticker. And you're entered to win in the contest. You get the emails. You get to be part of the community. And we get to check out and compete against other people. So you can do that by going to believeintherun.com forward slash grit. Yep. Thanks for listening to the recap of TRE. We'll have a normal podcast coming in a couple of days as well. Yeah. And special thanks to Brandon for editing up videos mm-hmm. on the fly while we there. Yeah, I did a great job. Everybody did a great job. I'm proud of everybody except yeah. for Jarrett. Wow. <laughs> Taylor even stepped it up on yeah. his <laughs> reviews. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thomas mentioned me, so that's, that's very first thing. <laughs> very first thing he does when we walk in is uh, uh, there's a shoe that we've taken a picture of. And then he goes, hey, can we post this? <laughs> I'm like, if you hadn't asked, we could have gone and posted. Oh, yeah. You know what? Uh, that, about the embargo. Yeah. Uh, you know, I made one mistake, okay? Which That's is right. pretty good for my record for trips, okay? That is true. I'll take one mistake a trip. Yeah. Do you, is there only one mistake I we know of? I think there is one other one. Yeah, what was the other one? What? I'm not going to say it. Ah. I won't say it on here. Was it that 47th truly for you? Oh. <laughs> is that a mistake? I, mm. I don't know. Uh, I never. Right. See, I also hadn't seen Jared that hammer before, which is pretty awesome. When was he hammered? By the end of Thursday night. Oh, I didn't see him like by the end. Speakies, yeah, I skipped that part. P. Terry's, which was. Oh, I needed to go to. Sleep, I need so. to try P. Terry's. I just can we go at a time that's not two a.m. That's the best time. I was going to yeah. say. I feel like that's where okay. I go. the time to go to P. Terry's. Yeah. All right. So a couple other restaurants we went to: Torchies Tacos for lunch. That's good. Uh, although my fingers smell like tacos the rest of the that is true, day. Um, you guys like the P. Terry's. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went to a place. What was the name of our Mexican place we went to? Uh, Alma. El Alma. El, El Alma. Alma. Yeah. And that was pretty good. Um, Cooper's Barbecue. Oh, yeah. And, but the A6 party was the yeah, best. that was the best. All, All right, right, guys. We're wrapping it up. We'll talk to you soon. If you have any questions about the shoes or anything, you know where to hit us up. And... Uh, We'll be publishing stuff. Bye. All right, bye. 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 Bye.